All right, in today's Turning Point video, we're breaking down the 5-2 comeback that New York had all the way back at the major five finals on a CeeLo search versus Atlanta phase. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we're starting with the 5-2 round. New York is on offense, Atlanta on defense. Uh, as you can see here, Atlanta is going to be doing a 2-2 spread where they basically give up the middle of the map here. Uh, so they're going to have two guys go out towards the outer side of B and then two guys work towards like the outer uh, eight control point. Uh, on the New York side, they're going to just be hitting a, a standard regular hit into the A side. Uh, so we'll see what happens from this point. So as you'll see here, Cell and Simp on the B side are working these double nays onto the blue steps, trying to get any info and if they're going to be going to top blue. Uh, on the other side here, on the A side, it's a BZ and Slasher. And a BZ is going to chow into the bottom checkers here. And this is kind of like a timing play. He probably hears them uh, getting closer to him in this checkers area. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have the help of Slasher to watch over him yet. Uh, as you'll see, once he starts actually engaging, uh, Austin isn't in a position to, to start trading with him. So uh, this is sort of a little mistake here on uh, Atlanta phase where they're just not synced up at the moment. And Paco is just reading this. You know, it's a really easy uh, way for you to get a first pick where you're just literally watching uh, the doorway, expecting them to make some plays, especially if you don't see them on bomb here. You see they're already onto the A bomb site or you don't see them watching the cross uh, from this little angle over here. If you don't see anyone towards that mid map, you're kind of expecting them uh, to be making plays on the outer side of the maps, either through the B side or through the A side. So this is a pretty good read from Paco where he has teammates on the site already and he's just looking for uh, players to start activating on the other team and he gets that free kill there. On the other side though, once that goes down, number one and number three are still hitting up towards this B side. Again, they gave up the middle of the map. Uh, so this is gonna be a free bomb plant for New York, but this is how you use some teamwork on the outer side of the map. Uh, he's trying to hold this outter window watching towards this B site and uh, Selium is gonna be able to kill him with the help from Simp. Uh, and and actually what happens here is it's now a 3v3, but I believe number three simp hears number eight trying to make a play through tools here and he gets a really big kill. So uh, this number eight player could have tried to start activating because they already have the bomb down. Uh, when I say activation, I mean like trying to make a play towards the other side of the map where the enemy team's not really expecting because the attention of the enemy is drawn towards one area of the map, uh, in which case it would be the bomb here because it's planted. Uh, so now it's a 3v2 and this is, should be a winnable round for Atlanta phase. You know, the story of this whole map is just going to be advantages that phase has that they're not able to really capitalize on. And it's probably something that they were really kicking themselves for because, you know, this is a 2-2 map. A uh, really big swing mode because if you get this map, it's a momentum builder. You go up 3-2 and then you only have to win one more map of the, of the whole series. So as you can see here, number two and number three are still gonna be trying to work together towards this outer side of the map. Unfortunately for them, Cell, as you can see, doesn't have Deddy right now. So he's running and I believe five Paco here is gonna hear him and catch him off guard. So this is a really unfortunate position for FaZe because they don't even get a trade off of it with Paco. And I believe it's probably just the footsteps that he's hearing and he's able to get a super easy pick and then dip back into the middle of the map. Uh, towards these kegs here so 2v2 now still bombed down for new york so it was a 3v2 uh, a pretty good advantage for uh, atlanta for the time being and then new york has that equalizer and now it's still on them to actually retake onto this bomb site as you can see here kiz is working in this corner but on the new york side since the way they planted uh this is a really common plant spot as you can see here they, they plant towards the right side of the bomb. So what you could actually do is a, a lot of teams did this where you can go up to top blue and play safe up here and watch for anyone that might be trying to defuse uh, from a little cross through this window. So you can see through the window of the bomb site. I believe my camera is actually blocking it, but this window over here, uh, you can have a really nice cross uh, from top blue and you can pretty much watch uh, for anyone that might be trying to retake or actually defuse the bomb. So what number five Paco here is trying to do is make his way back up to top blue so that he can be that fail safe for the team. So even in case FaZe does 2v1 Kismet onto the bomb site, he has that last resort of actually being able to kill them off bomb uh, in case they do start trying to defuse. But unfortunately for the FaZe side here, they're probably not coordinating this to the best ability that they could. At least for my money, you know, they would probably just teamwork Kismet on site here. I believe Simp is just trying to take another angle through the doorway but once Austin challenges I believe he's not even kicked the door open so it's kind of like they're separating themselves into two 1v1s so as you can see here it's just one second too early that Austin goes and while Simp is trying to bash this door in it's just a little bit too uh, late for him and he is going to get two piece by Kismet on bomb here and now New York goes to 5-3 after being able to salvage uh, that 2v3 with bomb down. Okay so this is the 5-3 round that had everyone talking uh, pretty much after the tournament and I kind of want to break this down because I see what Atlanta FaZe was trying to do here. Uh, but for my money, it was just not the most 
optimal play uh, with what you could do with the cruise missile. So this is the big cruise missile round uh, where they use their cruise missile, as you can see here. So New York is kind of giving up the bomb site, playing a little safe here, uh, where they have one guy like top party, one guy towards the grill over here, uh, one playing bottom mid, and one playing towards this uh, top cat money area. So what happens here is, I believe what FaZe is trying to do is actually work their way through this A side, uh, through top money, and get up top to this top red tower, use their streak so that they can eventually end off towards this B site. Um, I would love to hear what the cons were like. In my opinion, when we ever had a streak on this map, uh, I'd always like if we did, you know, just straight up B hit, where we'd have one guy go to this head glitch, uh, try and look for anyone top party, use the streak so that you can basically block out anyone uh, that might be in this area, because if they're in the open, uh, they're either have to gonna get into cover into the B site, or you can kill them with the streak, or they're gonna have to go back uh, towards you know bottom mid here and actually you know play their life for a little bit and and now you have the map control towards the B side and, and you could probably even get the bomb down. So I was kind of surprised when FaZe did this with their streak. Uh, so what you'll see here is they actually call the streak in once this is happening. Uh, you'll see Cell call it in right now and they're gonna start trying to make moves uh, towards this A control side of the map. So what they're trying to do here is basically back down New York but also have Simp uh, go towards this money area uh, push through towards the cat and actually try and get sort of uh, some positioning and get a pick towards this kitchen or top mid area or even anyone that might be playing these back stairs. And unfortunately for them, New York is just not giving them anything. I'll play this round out uh, so you guys can see. So New York is just playing this super, super tight and not giving them anything to work with. So as you can see here, a BZ even makes his way towards the A control and he's just looking at this bottom gym area. So they're trying to really take control of this whole side of the map and then try and get a pick there and then instantly move towards the B site, you know, wrap around this way with their pick and, and actually get the positioning that way. So this would probably actually really have worked if New York was playing, you know, in the bomb site, which they did a lot. You know, Kismet was really known for playing inside that A bomb site to prevent any sort of plant right away. So if they were playing inside the bomb site and playing, let's say, top mid uh, to go with it, you know, this could have been an easy pick for Simp top mid, and then they have one guy left at the bomb site. So it's basically uh, a 4v2 going into anyone that might have been playing B. And this allows Prisa, who is basically playing back lockers here, to go back and rotate towards this B site, expecting them to sort of hit out B, because New York knows that it's a possibility that once Atlanta phase is calling in this streak, that they could be moving up, um, pushing up here, because you know that's a completely open area and they have no control out of it. The only way that they could have seen anyone that might have been going B is if they were watching from top mid here, but they actually weren't at the time. So you know that map position could have been completely phases and New York would not have even known. So because of this lack of information from New York, this causes Priesta to fully rotate back. And because of all the time that Atlanta phase is taking over here, this is just setting up New York super well because not only are FaZe not taking this A site, they're also kind of delaying this B push because they're trying to work this side of the map. And since New York is just not giving them any info, not giving them any free kills, uh, they're just wasting the time clock so much for them. And it just creates a really bad situation for FaZe, unfortunately. So the, the streak goes down, they get nothing for it. Simp even is trying to make his way towards the kitchen. He drops the bomb top cat because he knows if he starts challenging towards this top kitchen area, challenging towards like uh, top mid, if he dies, the round is basically completely lost for them. So he drops the bomb and now he's trying to basically work up alone. You know, he does have Austin watching kind of over him, but once he gets into that kitchen area, he's kind of all by himself from that point onwards. So. Uh, it, it's really kind of a, a super slow moving around. And as you can see here, New York is just not even moving. They're just making Atlanta phase be the ones to try and be that aggressor and make that first move because on the defense side, they don't really have to do anything. You know, they're probably just expecting them to go and plan A because they have just completely given up the site. The only one that's actually watching A is number seven here, watching the cross into uh, this A doorway. So he's basically just jiggling, seeing if they're even going towards the site. And this is probably this is the best counter for this play specifically. So really going on New York for playing on the fly like this. Uh, unfortunately for FaZe, you know, they just don't get anything. And, you know, I get the idea, but unfortunately this is just a super hard counter for it. And uh, because they use the streak, uh, they basically waste it. They don't get anything off of this. This is a really nice play out of Skies here. He's playing this outer party area from a super tight angle. As you can see here, 
uh, from the bod. He's playing this tight angle, basically closing the door off from him so that he can't be seen from anyone that might be exiting this door. And you'll see from here that Simp just gets completely caught off guard, not expecting Skies to be over here. Skies tags him up and he's actually not even able to get the kill. And actually Cell on the other side of the map is already pushed towards uh, the soccer field head glitch, who's actually trying to get any kills towards this B side. And he does find Kismet who's wrapping back from bottom tools here, who's actually trying to help Skies on that back uh, party area because they wanted to really contain this because New York knew if FaZe was able to take this map control through back party and actually get that trade onto Skies that they would have really good positioning to start making their way towards this B site. But really, really good play out of Priest here. He probably makes the play of the round by taking the route to go fully around and, and be this hard clear towards this B site. Once he knows that he's here, he can just relay to his teammates that he completely has this site for them. And you'll see that he gets a free pick over here because they're just not expecting him to be towards this site already because they use the streak. So this is a really good play out of Priesta. And what happens here now is New York is just able to play super prevent towards this B side and they're going to salvage this round. You can actually see them playing really good on these crosses now and Paco is making his way from the other side of the map. So now it's a 2v2, super mixy and this is anyone's 2v2. But Paco is able to get a really nice two piece here because he was that lost member of the team uh, that they had no info on. So he's able to clean it up and they're able to make it 5-4. So it was a big round because not only does New York win, but they also waste phases streak so they don't have that left to play with for these next two rounds. So 5-4 round, this is a lot to break down. As you can see here, FaZe is gonna be playing a more of a contest heavy onto this A site play, where they're, instead of like we saw in the previous defense, hitting those outer areas of the map, they're gonna be contesting this A site. As you'll see, Abizi works his way towards uh, the A site, making sure that he can deny any sort of fast A hit uh, from the New York side. But as you can see from FaZe here, by contesting this, they're team working this angle for this doorway into the A site. As you can see here, Simp playing this angle that I was talking about before, what he can do here is he can see through uh, this little crack in the window and see whether the door is open and whether people are trying or trying to contest on the offensive side. So what he can do here is give that information to Abizi so Abizi can chow right away uh, while Kiz is not expecting it. So what happens here is they're actually not able to get this kill on Kiz, but they get shots down and they're able to deny him from that forward positioning right at the beginning of the round. So they basically just did their job. They, they're contesting this site. They have one inside the bomb site, one that's going to be going top mid. Uh, that's going to be sell one bottom mid and then Slasher is the lone uh, lurker here. So even if you did contest the site, you usually would have one person working the outer areas of the map, just trying to play this lurker role where you're hitting these long routes, trying to catch the offense off guard, you know. So by Slasher lurking and taking this route here, he's just trying to make a play uh, towards the middle of the round, trying to catch that offense off guard, either whether they're trying to make a play onto the bomb site or they're just not picking it up at the time and just abusing that timing. Because a lot of times on this map specifically, there was just so many lanes that you had to watch as an offense that the defense could be hitting at any point in time, especially with dead silence. You know, as an offense, you wanted to control that situation as much as possible because you don't want to have to go and try to work onto the bomb site while also being flanked from your back and, you know, not being able to watch all those angles at once because it's just impossible at a certain point especially while you're trying to make a play so again on the defense you know you would at least have one player trying to do this type of play so what this is going to force new york to do is play a little bit more passive a little bit more campy because what they're going to have to do is get information and make a mid round decision based off of that you know a lot of times in search and destroy it's basically just get as much information as you can and then make a mid round decision based off of that and hopefully that play works so that's what New York is going to be doing here. You know, they're playing angles to try and get free picks on anyone that might be playing super aggressive like we saw in the previous round. So what Kiz is going to do here is trying to basically find any sort of information that they can. So they know Abizi is on the bomb side already. They're trying to wall bang him a little bit. But now Kiz is just trying to jiggle, get any information that he can see bottom or top mid. He sees sell top mid. And what they're going to do now is make a play off of it. What he's going to do here is call to make a play through the middle area of the map towards this keg area. I assume it's him making the call because he was the one that got the information on sell top mid. So what he does here is they're going to try and get a timing. As you see, Cell's trying to like dive back and forth. They're going to try and get a timing where they can abuse that. So they see Cell dive over there. Now they have a good opportunity to make a play onto the site. Kiz is going to try and chow Abizi here. Unfortunately, he does not win the gunfights. So he's expecting Paco to get the trade here from the front door of the bomb site. They were trying to team lurk this together. But unfortunately for them, Abizi has played his micro positioning so well that, you know, he was on this top bed here and then he moved towards the bomb site using this as a head glitch because he is expecting probably two players on the New York side to be challenging him at once because they know he's in the bomb site alone. So really good play out of Abizi and he's able to get this two piece here. So even if Paco did win that gunfight, they did have Simp 
uh, hitting out through the bottom checkers here and he would have had the trade anyways. But from this, it's a 2v4 with bomb down. This should be Atlanta phases round two win. And this is probably the biggest round they're kicking themselves for not winning. As you see here, it's a super winnable position for them. Uh, but so many things are gonna go wrong here and I'll show you the first thing. So, so first off, Austin has now made his play where he's going now to the top steps. Uh, trying to make a play. So he's going to try and open the door uh, to the top blue here and see if he can find anyone and get any information that might be playing top blue and either kill them or just get information for his teammates. Uh, but unfortunately from this, and this is all hindsight, but he probably thinks that Cell has his B alley here. So unfortunately for him, Skies is here at the top blue area, but he's going to be able to see slash or opening this door from his position. And he's gonna be able to relay that to Priesta, who is already bottom arcade, and is gonna loop around and kill Slasher from his back. But, you know, again, Slasher is not expecting this. He's expecting Cell to have over him. So, once again, it's one of those maps where there's just so many corners, so many lanes where you expect your teammate to have over you, but he just doesn't have that ability to watch over you. And Priesta is able to get a free kill off of that. You know, really unfortunate situation, but that's not even the only thing. As you'll see here, Cell. Probably the most unfortunate situation for him in the entire tournament. You know, he he's trying to make a play here. And sometimes when you're just so focused on making a play, what's right in front of you just gets completely blurred out and you don't see it. So for my money, what he's trying to do here is just super hard chow and camera anyone that might be playing this arcade corner. But you know, instead, Priesta went around here, took the back door, and is just sitting in the middle of the bar. So as you'll see here, he challenges, but in the peripherals, you know, he's trying to recenter onto Priesta as soon as he sees it but it's just a little too late and Priest is able to get the free kill. So, you know, again, sometimes those things do happen where you're just not expecting him to be wide out in the open for you. And it just completely catches you off guard when you're trying to make a play. And, you know, Sellers was probably kicking himself for not seeing that, but it doesn't even end there. So now it's a 2v2, 30 seconds left. It's still a really winnable position for FaZe. Uh, so what happens here is I think Simp gets some really good timing where Skies jumps down from top mid to him for a free kill. But I believe, unfortunately for Simp, he probably hears Priesta here. What happens here is Priesta picks up the bomb from Kiz's body, uh, bottom kegs, is now just making a beeline to uh, the B site. And I believe Simp thinks that he can just chow here, expecting Priesta to just be beelining towards it, not being able to have his gun up for a gunfight uh, and not being able to expect a gunfight here. But unfortunately, Priesta does win it and he even has time to get this bomb down and then he ends up winning the 1v1 on a BZ. So super unfortunate situation. In hindsight, you'd probably expect the two phase players to just group up and wait for that bomb plant to go down and then retake together. But unfortunately, he probably does think that he has this timing because there was so little time on the clock, expecting Priest to just go instantly towards the bomb. Uh, but, you know, Priest probably does get the call out from Skies, his kill cam. Skies is probably just saying, you know, he's going to child bottom tools and he's ready for it. So really unfortunate situation all around for the phase roster uh, the entire round. And now it's able to go to 5-5 five, five, round 11 with New York having that momentum. Okay, round 11, we're going to have New York on the defensive side. And what they're doing here is not contesting the bomb site. So what phase is going to do is they're going to instantly hit onto this A site for free and basically try and get this bomb down instantly and then just watch the pinches. As you can see here, number one is watching the money pinch from top blue. Number four is watching the deep pinch uh, from back white here. So he's watching for anyone that might be playing that deep route that he was playing before. So they're just getting the bomb down, watching the pinches. And what they're trying to do is just get that bomb down instantly and play the post plant that I was talking about before uh, from that top blue area. So what's gonna happen here is FaZe is gonna be able to get this bomb down for free. But what happens here is they're just too focused on these outer lane pinches. And that's really just gonna cost them. You see number two here is watching the checkers pinch. Number one, watching uh, the money pinch like I talked about before. Number four, watching the deep pinch. They're watching all these pinches that they have no eyes on this mid retake. And this is a perfect play out in New York to retake through mid like this because as you can see no one on phase is watching mid so hydra and kismet are going to with their subs work their way into the bomb site and kill simp for free after he plants the bomb and it's the freest retake of a site that you'll ever see so they kill him right as bomb goes down and now they have the complete site control and what they're going to try and do now is just completely deny phase from playing any sort of post plant through this top mid area so again this is just super unfortunate for phase because they're expecting new york to be making plays on the outer side of the map with deddy you know trying to hit those outer lanes because it was so susceptible on a silo that new york is just going to play so straight up and they just hit through the middle of the map and retake through there so super heads up play by new york and paco's going to chow out here and catch a bz off guard trying to throw a nade so he gets another pick by just being a super aggressive on this retake 
And by being so aggressive like this, they're just getting in the face of FaZe and putting the pressure on because they know that they themselves are on a time clock and FaZe is playing the post plant. So New York has that internal time clock that is ticking. So they're making plays. They're now in a 4v2 scenario. And now New York is taking different angles. You see Priesta collapsing through money and he's gonna get this kill on Celium, who's playing this post plant position. Again, like I said, you, you play from top blue here. You can see the bomb defusal uh, for anyone that might be defusing. So he's gonna take this money route, catch them off guard, wall these these kills are going down you know you can't be seeing all the lanes at once so you're collapsing from all these angles and now it's just a lost cause for phase uh, once cell dies here because last guy is white they're all the defuse already and new york is able to take this round win they take the map by coming back five to two and now they're able to go up three to two in the series you know in a map they probably should have lost and gone down two to three you know they ice up clutch this map they end up losing a seal control right after this so phase would have won this map it would have been a tournament victory for them so by winning this map it does go to game seven and they end up winning the championship here as you guys probably know so really good to ice up out in new york turning that map around unfortunately for the phase side they're probably kicking themselves for all those rounds they probably should have won uh, but, you know, it's all in hindsight and it was some really good plays out of New York. But thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this turning point breakdown of the Asilo search and I'll see you guys in the next one.